Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Polytime Podcast. My name is Red, and today I'm joined by my co-host, Alpha. As always. Um, and before we do go any further, Alpha wanted uh, to uh, say something really quickly. Go ahead. Yeah, I made a, a bit of an oopsie. Uh, so I, I want to apologize. Like I said last week, it was in, within my intention to do a two-part blog and write the second part to be published this Monday. Uh, however, as you might have probably noticed, uh, today, last, um, god damn it, we are filming this on Tuesday, so uh, yesterday's blog, meaning Monday's blog, was not the two part blog which I was supposed to write, it was instead uh, Red's blog. This was because uh, some unforeseen things happened in my personal life, nothing serious. And I did not have enough time to complete the the research and the writing that I think should be necessary whenever we are tackling a topic that has as much importance as the topic that I that I still want to present as next week's blog. So for that, I apologize. Uh, hopefully, next week it will be finished and published. All right. And with that being said, before we get into this week's uh, blog um, post, uh, don't forget that if you enjoy our content, you can always support us over on Patreon. Um, and if you do so and also join our public Discord server, you can submit questions to our podcast Q&A, which we answer at the end of each episode. However, something which I've re very rarely mentioned on, on the podcast, but I want to start mentioning now, uh, is that... If you can't support us over on Patreon, but you still want to support us, you can check out our website and look at the different ways that you can support us without, you know, in, in non-monetary ways. Uh, so make sure to go check that out because in some ways that support is much more uh, valuable than any monetary um, support you could ever give us. Um, and also make sure to follow us over on our social media platforms like Threads, Instagram, or whatever, or you can also follow our newsletter on our w website, I guess, um, to stay up with the newest uh, stuff going on with uh, Polytime. For example, uh, with Alpha's a bit of a little issue, at some point we considered, you know, delaying the the blog to make to, to make sure that he could post it. So if something like that it will happen, we will announce it through our social media platforms, through our website. So make sure to, to follow us there to keep up with everything. And of course, we will also say it on Discord. So yeah, if you join the Discord, you know, it, it all adds up. Um, and so, yeah, let's get into the article. So, as Alpha said, I ended up writing uh, the article this week, and it's something, it's a bit of a, it's not a bit, an article, a type of article which we have done yet. Yes, we have done opinion articles, but this one goes even further than that. Um, it is a very personal topic in the sense that I wrote it straight from the heart. I didn't really do any research. There was no research to be done. This was purely me putting out my opinion out there. Um, also, not not only because I thought that it's interesting to um, kind of stir up a conversation around this topic, but also because I thought it would be very interesting to talk about it on the podcast. Um, AKA Red was spitting fire. Uh, so I chose uh, the, the topic of uh, patriotism. Um, I am a person who has lived throughout my 19 years of life in two different countries. I moved at a very early age. Uh, and so I've never really been, I, I've never really been tied to one country uh, throughout my childhood, throughout my teenage years. And now, you know, going into my adulthood, I see myself in the future moving again. So it's not something that I'm like, I'm not tethered to one country. Um, that obviously has influence in many ways, the way that I view the concept of country and the concept of patriotism, because not only do I not really identify myself with one nationality because of the fact that I've always been moving around, I also was never able to tie myself to any type of patriotism because of that exact same reason. So one day during this last weekend, I was feeling especially inspired. Uh, I have no idea why, but sometimes when I'm getting ready in the morning, I start debating myself out loud like a crazy person that I am. Really? Um, that is, I, I did not know that. 
and so sometimes I just start talking to myself. I just start thinking like I'm kind of, you know, the same type of conversation I'll be doing on here uh, or I'll be doing on Paladime Reads on the main channel. Go check that out too. Uh, great segue there for me. Um, and you know, the same way that I'll be here talking to the audience, or in this case, talking to the audience and Alpha, um, I'll be doing that to myself. And usually I'm not doing that because I'm some, you know, uh, crazy person. I'm a bit, but, you know, not just because I gotta of that. Ask, how do you do that? Like, good morning, crazy thoughts in my head. No, no, it's not literally like that. It's more of just like a, I just randomly start speaking out loud and I'm just kind of just like organizing my thoughts. I'm What's just kind of... Voices? I just start kind of... I just kind of thinking, I just started thinking like, what if this was this way? And then this was like this, but how, but maybe not like that. Like, I mean, it can be about anything. It can be about but a political topic. Inside voice. That is kind of funny though. I, I do guess. use the inside voice. It's just that when I'm alone, I choose to do it outside. Does that make sense? <laughs> you use the, the inside voice outside. So you, exactly. you just use your voice. Yeah. I just, I, I'm, yeah, I'm talking with the voices. Um, but anyways. In my head. I started thinking about the concept of patriotism because it's something that has always in a way bothered me, uh, mostly because I don't, I've never experienced it. I've never really been in a situation where I can look at the country I live in or the country I'm from, which yes, it's the same, but uh, you know, in, even in the past when I didn't live in the country I'm from, uh, I've never felt that. Um, and now that I do live in the country that I'm from, which is Portugal, just like Alpha, I still don't like. I still don't look at the concept of Portugal and go, "Yeah, I'm really proud of this." Like, no, I could not give less of a fuck. Uh, of course, I care about the people. I care about, you know, example. I was uh, during this article. I was thinking about uh, one of our most impor important national days, uh, which is uh, celebrating the the fall of uh, the, the dictatorship. And I know that, for example, for Alpha's family, it's something that's you know very dear to them. And I was always yeah. whilst writing this article, I was that was always something that was in the back of my mind. I was always thinking about that exact thing about you, you Alpha, and your family, um, and thinking about like revolutionary past, baby. But in a way, I, I started thinking, like, is that patriotism or is that just fighting for people's rights? Like, I always kept that in the back of my mind. It's like you could, you could view it as patriotism because, oh, you're fighting for your country and stuff like that. But I always started questioning myself, like, but is that the true movement or did, do people, did people want to, you know, remove the dictator because they, oh, I love my country so much or because they were sick of a motherfucker fucking their shit up and they're like, nah, we're sick of this and we want to liberate the people. And that's, and that's the key point of, of this article is people versus the concept of country, which in a way is not the same. And I think that's to, to a lot of people, it is the same, you know, fighting for your country is fighting for the people, but it's not always, um, it's not always that simple. Yes, it can be that simple it's if you want to... It's important to mention that the concept of country was one of the most important aspects of said dictatorship, which led to years of colonialism and a war within uh, Portugal's African colony. Yeah, so I wrote this article purely based upon my rambles. Um, and in based. fact, uh, I... Based. I, for those who don't know, I like writing. I love writing of many types. I like writing uh, fictional stuff, but also uh, recently, more recently, I've started writing uh, more non-fictional stuff or more political stuff, obviously in the blog, that's pretty clear, but also just for myself. Um, and uh, when I was thinking about this patriotism thing, I was, you know, I wrote an entire file. I had like, it's like three pages long or something. I don't remember. Um, and it's just purely like just me, like writing down my thoughts, writing down my opinion and being you know, trying to structure in a way that I'm like, all right, now I have formulated this opinion of, of something. And it's now like been sh structured into this file, a file that I can revisit, I can reread, I can rethink, I can, you know, kind of just... Um, being able to put my opinion into something that's visual, something that I can look back to and actually, you know, um, yeah, see as anything that's, you know, you know, like a like a regular file of of like a story or something. So it's something that I I've been trying to do more uh, out of just being able to, or being or trying to further develop my ideology and further developing my opinions. I think that doing stuff like that is is a, a way for me to be be able to structure uh my ideology or my personal ideology yeah. um 
And so when it came to patriotism, I started kind of feeling I, when I was writing about it uh, originally, I was thinking that it, in a way I find it that it's a bit of a self-betrayal. Uh, and I say that because at what point has you being patriotic served you any good? And I'm not saying that's like, oh, like, oh, the, the country gives you nothing back. Therefore, you must just, you know, topple the government. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you being patriotic or you kind of blindly being patriotic, which is mostly the issue, you, you know, you having this insane love for a country is not really benefiting you in any way. So why do it? And that was, <clears throat> and that's one of the many questions I have towards patriotism is why do it if there is no benefit, there is no, uh, there's nothing you're getting back. And I started thinking about the relationship of, with, uh, between a country and a person like two people, because to many patriotics, the love you have to, for your country is like an, an unconditional uh, love in a relationship, right? Like you, no matter what, you love the country. However, um, a country is something that is not palpable. It's not something that's physical. It is the people, it's its culture, it's its history. And it's not something that you that is like something you're actually getting anything back from. Uh, because it, hypothetically speaking, if you actually live in a country that respects human rights and actually has a, you know, a social, um, what's it called? Uh, like a, an infrastructure for um, social benefits and stuff like that, you don't need to, you don't need that. Like you already, you, it's kind of the opposite. The, 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 the country has unconditional love towards you. I mean, um, I see uh, extremely patriotic people in the same light as I can see some religious people. Yeah, it's, it's... You have this aspect of adoration and to yeah. be able to, to slot yourself in a little box and say, hey, I'm part of this team. Look how great my group is. I am so glad that I'm part of this group and there is nothing you can do to take that away from me. That's, Another... that's kind of how I see it. One other thing that I was keeping in mind when writing this article is the difference between patriotism and, national, and nationalism. Uh, they're very similar, uh, but they're very similar in the way that somebody can be religious and then somebody can be a religious extremist. Uh, kind of the same concept, at least to me, like you can love your country or love your religion and then the way you do it and your actions then you know divide you into being a peaceful and regular person that does it and somebody that's like oh no no my country is not only the best i will now enforce this by murdering others um and doing a bunch of horrid shit like that which you know best way to enforce your patriotic views so that was yeah so moving on another aspect that i start started questioning is like why do people look at a country and go, this is the best thing ever. This is something that I love. This is something that's amazing. And I started looking at it in a logical way, in a logical sense, right? Like why, like surely if a country is so great that I must fly its flag, that I must every year when there's a some sort of sport, I must paint myself the colors of the flag. Uh, I, I must at any point, you know, I must know the, the, the national anthem uh, on the, I must have it on the tip of my tongue, ready to come out at any second. Then surely that country must have achieved great things and must be worthy of all that love, right? And so I started thinking. I started really thinking about the history. Oh, shit, I had my microphone, sorry. Uh, I started thinking about the history of the world. And I started thinking about the great countries that we have. And I started realizing that objectively, objectively, there has never been one great country. There has never been a country which has deserved to be loved so much. Because let's think of the colonial powers, right? Let's not even go into the other countries. We'll do that later. But let's go into the colonial powers. Just by that name, we know that they're fucked. They're colonial powers. They did colonialism. They murdered millions. They, you know, kidnapped millions. They did horrendous shit. They were racist. They're literally the creators of racism. They're the creators of white supremacy. They uh, destroyed thousands of cultures by spreading Christianism and, and uh, their religions. So instantly, horrible history, nothing to be proud of there. Personally, I can't find anything to be proud in the, in the history of 
colonial powers, which is most of Europe. Most of the developed world has, uh, there's absolutely no reason to be proud of it when it comes to that specific concept. Can I, uh, can I interject with something? Sure. I think, and this is dumbass me saying this, the first part of what you just said, uh, why do people adore their country so much? It's the same way as with a football team. You have uh, this group of people. The football team may be, be too harsh. Too harsh. Uh, it's the same way as with... Fuck, how do I say this? A political party. You basically have this incorporation of your ideologies and symbolism. The same way that a party might have an anthem and... Oh, pardon me. And a flag and a symbol in a group of people who believe in something. Uh, a country can also reflect a certain type of ideals. And the people that live in that country might either really fucking agree with those ideals or not. And sometimes when people look at a country's supposed history or their supposed ideals and really, really agree with them, they go really patriotic. Second thing history there is no way to say that there has been one great country in history because we collectively have what humanity has 250,000 uh, uh, years of history uh, a short period of which was uh, organized into countries and nationalities but still that's a lot of time that's a lot of people that have interacted within their own environment and other environments and a lot of fuck shit has been done there, there's also a lot of great stuff that has been achieved thanks to a certain country's philosophies ideals and the opposite can also be said but mostly those things are a reflection of that country's leadership but what i was trying to get at is that like you said History, relatively speaking, the, the, the history where countries have existed has been relatively short to the rest of humanity. Uh, throughout most of uh, the time that humans, as we know them, if you want to go there, um, have existed, the concept of country did not exist. Uh, we had tribes, we had families, uh, we, you know, ordered ourselves by just... The apes together strong, man. Yeah, it was basically just a bunch of different groups uh that were divided uh then of course uh later on you know as we start selling settling down as we start you know uh, going from hunting hunting and gathering into uh into farming and other stuff that that's when the first you know concepts of a city or a town start being born and then as it towns grew to cities as cities grew to to to, you know wanting more territory that's when the concept of empires which then was you know in some way i'd say is that like is the concept of country already right this idea of like having one symbol having you know a, a language or having something that represents you um and and i think that my issue with countries it lies exactly there is the concept that it the, like why it existed and in a way it's purely because there was a bunch of greedy fucks that wanted a lot of power <laughs> that's always in a way I mean, that's that's been the founding that's been the foundation on which the concept of of country right of the country has been, was made is is just a few a select few which wanted to control uh land wanted to control people wanted to be able to um you know not not have to worry about uh you know the the, the issues of life like you know hunger and stuff like that and wanted to uh y gain more power to make sure that they had you know the most luxurious life as possible and by doing so, they they you know they wanted more and more power. Then they you know they also wanted to be respected. They wanted to be loved unconditionally. Uh, whether you you know whether the 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 people uh, wanted it or not, they had to. Otherwise, they'd get killed or something like that. And 
whilst in the modern era, of course, people are mo in, okay, in, I was gonna say in, in most countries, that's not true. There's still a lot of countries that if you don't respect your leader, you're gonna get fucked. Uh, like North Korea this is a good example. Uh, like it's, it to me, it's the exact same kind of just issue. Um, and I think that not, whilst in the past you kind of had to support your leader or su su you know uh, support your king or emperor or or whom whomever is in power because either you did it or you'd get killed in the modern age it was yes there's definitely still countries where you have to do that because you'll get killed in most countries for example let's say portugal there's absolutely no reason to do so it is purely out of habit or just out of this kind of long-term kind of side effect of like uh, of a history where people just kind of it just be kind of it just kind of became the norm that you just are patriotic because that's just a thing you do and why do you do you it you, you have, don't know uh, because you know that you have a monarchic party yeah i know but yeah and i that, didn't know that those, those, until um, i heard there would be a coalition with a with our, uh, ah, what's it called? With our uh, right wing party. Yeah. So there's, and I think that's uh, there's something that I, I I don't remember if I actually put this in the article or not because I, I did write it at some point, but I you know took, I cut out stuff from the article and then put it back in and then cut it out. So I don't even remember what the final draft looks like anymore. Uh, it was very late at night when I wrote it. Um, and so I remember writing at some point that what, like, what to me is the cause of why does patriotism exist even? And I think that in, in most countries, uh, because like, you know, in North Korea, being patriotic is not being patriotic, is literally a means of survival. That's not, at that point is not being patriotic. That's, that's just life, you know, like there's, I'm not going to call that patriotism, but however, in, in most, uh, Western countries where you don't need to be patriotic to fucking survive at that point, you're just being like, you're, you literally, in my opinion, you literally must have no, um, what's the word, uh, critical thinking to be able to be patriotic. It is just, you, you grew up thinking that your country is great. And now you just, you have never had an original thought in your mind and you're just like, yeah, fuck it. Uh, uh, this country is good. My country is great, and I'm, I, my name is Billy Bob, and I'm voting for the Republican Party. Um, and so, and of course, here I'm making a joke mostly about the U.S. because that's probably the most patriotic country in the world. That's not. I actually try to. I actually try to do some research statistically to try to find out what was the most. A patriotic country but there's like i don't think anybody i wasn't able to find anything i don't think anybody has ever come to a conclusion not that it would actually matter anyways uh what the most patriotic country is uh but i think that we can i th think we can at least make the the observation that the u.s is a very blindly patriotic country and with being the country that has you know at least in the last 50 years we're not even looking in the into the past we're not even looking into its uh you know colonial past if we're just looking at the last 50 years the amount of atrocious shit they have done across the planet is enough to you to, to make you question like why in the fuck would you be patriotic uh, uh, you know about this monstrous uh country it, it's it's kind of insane when you start looking at it like a logical standpoint it's completely incomprehensible uh in my opinion um and of course there's always the the nationalism problem which then of course is where you know when like patriotism is like oh oh no they they oh no it's like oh they they're dumb like you know <laughs> like it's like oh no they're they 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 think their country is nice okay cool whatever let them be but then it's like oh oh you're oh boy oh god you're a nationalist oh fuck okay that's that's bad get away from me like that's you're crazy oh okay that you're you're actually like you, you you're into nazi shit okay uh oh boy uh that's that's when shit gets terrifying that's when you you know when people start like uh, saying that other countries must die and that you know and and flying in certain flags which is currently happening in the u.s that's when you get scared because you're like whoa what the fuck is happening um in fact, I, in, the, in the article I wrote uh, that uh, that nationalism is a form of patriotism uh, because in a sense it is. It's just that it's a different v version of it. It's a more extreme version of it. Um, but 
one of the, the main points that I, I want to do this article is obviously there's nothing wrong per se with being patriotic. There's like, you're, it's not going to, like you being patriotic is not yeah, the end of the world. When you say, yeah, my country's great. Fuck you. Uh, good thing we bombed them. Yeah. It, but it's not just that. It's like my, this is going to sound weird, but I, if, as an atheist, and not those okay and not I those see. and also and not those cringy ass <laughs> annoying <laughs> and not those annoying ass like atheists that just like dunking on religious people like it's there's no tomorrow because that w what even is the point of doing that like at that like it's really? it's like oh cool you don't believe there's a god like it doesn't make you it doesn't give you the right to be an, an asshole uh <laughs> um I, I, in many ways, I see patriotism in the same way as as being religious. Uh, like you said, yeah, you did you did an amazing job with that with that reference because it, it truly is like that. Is like you believing in this organized thing that you love because you feel that you you know that it that you belong to it that you know it gives you purpose it makes you feel like you belong to something bigger. Uh, you know, it has a name, it has a symbol, it has somebody you follow. You know, it's almost the exact same shit when, you know, in these terms. Um, but at the end of the day, it just isn't for me. Like, you know, like I, I don't know what to tell you, but I really, I'm not conforming to these things. Um, yeah. Because I, another thing, which I even talked to you, Alpha, which is, is something that I came, a, a simple phrase that I came up with, which made me, I was like, ooh, ooh, I'm proud of this one, which is that, Patriotism is conservative in its nature, or its nature, or the nature of patriotism is conservative. And what do I mean by that? Because uh, when I was the, when I was writing this blog, uh, at some point I I came to I was like I decided to search up being like is patriotism inherently conservative, and I saw you know results which were like no like being patriotic can also be a progressive idea because when you love your country so much. You want to protect it. You want it to advance. You want it to progress. Um, therefore, being patriotic can also be a progressive idea. But then I started thinking about what what does that mean? Because in a greater scale, in a, in a smaller scale, sure. If the world was just one country, if we were just looking at one country, if if all that mattered was one country, sure, being patriotic is progressive. But that's not the world we live in. There is not one country. There is hundred and many, ninety. Well, can you Google how much it is? Hundred and something countries. Jesus fucking Christ! How many? <laughs> how many countries are there? Are there? Uh, one hundred ninety-five. Ninety-five. I was one. gonna say one hundred ninety-four. So I was, I was. I didn't say it, but I was extremely close to it. So there's one hundred ninety-five countries, right? And if all countries have that exam exact mentality which unfortunately is the reality, um, then it's not progressive anymore. Because if everybody is trying to progress in this little community, then nobody progresses. Because it's just, that's like, you can't expect to want to progress one country whilst trying to, trying to progress all countries. Because if, when you start trying to progress all countries in unison, in one group, then there no longer is one, there's no longer 195 con countries. There's suddenly you're trying to progress humanity. And if you're trying to progress humanity without looking at the concept of country, then you're no longer patriotic. It's kind of like it's, you can't have both. That's what I'm trying to say is you can't, be super patriotic and be like, oh yeah, 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 I'm doing this because I want my country to progress. Because if you want only, because if you're if you're saying that, oh, I, I'm patriotic, therefore I want my country to progress, you have either two options: either you want only your country to progress, which is then you start, you know, dipping into national, start dipping your toes into nationalism. You're like, oh, um, uh. oh um, or you say that, oh, I, but I want my country to, to progress and I want all countries to progress. I want humanity to progress. And it's like, yeah, but then you're not patriotic. If you want everybody, then like, then you're proud of, like you want everything. Like, you know, like there's a, there's something at fault there. So that's what I try. That's what I'm trying to say is by being patriotic and having this mindset of, oh, I want my country to progress. I want my country to be the best and stuff like that. There's instantly a bit of a conservative view because you're trying to cons cons con conserve, sorry, uh, your country. You're trying to make sure that your country stays the best. So your country has 
the best thing that like it's the superior one etc and at that point you are being conservative because you are miss your your um being unable to recognize that for humanity to truly progress for us to truly you know be uh you know to truly progress as a, as a as a species or whatever we kind of have to let go of the concept of country because it is a made up thing which people made up a long time ago which has no real value when it comes to as to to us in a global scale it truly doesn't yes there's different cultures but different cultures does not a culture does not define its country Let, let's just look at africa right after we uncolonized and colonized it which technically never really did but whatever like i'm not going to get into that because yeah, you can't just say oh yeah we're leaving now and like whoa what uh that's not how you do uncolonialism you have to you know do reprimand reprim i can't speak today reparation you have to do reparation you need to actually be, be able you know you need to invest money in making sure the country can actually heal from your horrendous acts you just can't just nah, like yeah he'll be fine you can't just like kick, you can't just like kick it into the you know into like the corner and be like ah i'm done with i'm done playing with you bye so let's just look at africa right like africa there's i don't know how many countries there are but I would. I don't know if this is correct, but I probably say that Africa is probably one of, if the, if not the most culturally diverse uh, continent on the planet. Like, and there is, uh, uh, there are so many. Have you looked at Asia? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. True. That. That's. That's true. How? Whatever. That's okay. That's... Have you looked at Europe? But Europe is different. Europe has more time, has had more time to unify, and and people no longer really care. Like a, a person in north, in northern part of Portugal, are not going to consider themselves a different country to the southern part. That, that's what I'm trying to say. In Africa, in different. Africa, in Africa, we just kind of like we just were like, all right, so we're 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 gone now, but we're gonna like draw like we're gonna do America st American style borders. We're just gonna draw a straight fucking line. And we don't give a shit that if this line separates an actual tribe or an actual group of people who consider themselves one country. No, we don't give a shit. So they just started doing this little grid, right? Just started cutting shit off. And the reality is that it consistently, if you if you look at the history uh, of the African continent, you start realizing that a lot of the conflicts inside countries in Africa happen because there is two tribes or, or several tribes or I don't know what the correct term is. So I'm sorry if the tribe is not the correct terminology uh, or groups that are part of one country, but they don't speak the same language, don't have the same culture. They have, they have absolutely nothing to do with each other. But we in Europe are like, nah, 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 nah it's one, it's, it's one country. So instantly there, we recognize that countries, you know, countries do not define a culture or do not define people because people define themselves and cultures define themselves and while like people define the country's culture yeah so that's that's another issue to me is that i i think i pardon my 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 language but i think it's a little cringy when people like their whole personality is the country they're from which is like a lot of americans like yeah. we get it we like stars and stripes, goddammit. Well, it. we also know that America, America's uh, nationalism, patriotism, comes from that thing that I talked about last week, which is the the value of having the private property. Yeah, it's like it's like so it's to be American is to have a piece of America. You are part of America, bitch. You're America. Put on their red cap, bring out your 12 gauge, and shoot the motherfucker and try to get across your lawn. Especially if they are Brits, French, <laughs> Spanish, or look slightly different in terms of ethnicity. Or speak a different language, have a slightly different, you know. Uh, basically, anybody that isn't a white man who's specifically straight, kill it. Murder. Or an attractive white woman too. Put it in the put it in the yeah, because you gotta you gotta breed. Just kill it. Put it in the ground. Six feet under. Nobody cares. Um, that's their mentality. Anyways, so get off my lawn, bitch. There's something a little cringy about first of all, to me, call me a whatever the fuck. Uh, Just to eat this again, I'm gonna kill you. Call I don't know what you would call me, but um 
anti-nationalists. But, yeah, an anti-nationalist, uh, anti-nations. Because uh, I, I don't give a fuck. I, I think that we are... Um, I think I that... Mean, you can, I think you can certainly be proud of certain aspects of your country. I don't think you... I don't think being no. proud of... The country, I mean, no. I am pretty fucking proud that we had a revolution and didn't kill anyone. Yeah, but that's... You're not proud of... Really but you're not proud. proud of the country. You're proud of the people. Yeah, but the people make the country. Yeah, but do they? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. What is a country? It is... It's a made-up thing. It's a contract it's that we signed. Of a map to... that is composed by different people who yeah. together claim that this is our piece of land and but, as it is why? ours, we are it. But is it, is it our... But who the, fuck, who the fuck said that this is our land? Okay, do you have a country without people? No. Okay, then you need people I mean, to have the country. There probably is like some people little island. Country. Just... But that's the thing is that, I, I, in my opinion, we're, we, that doesn't matter. Like, we are... Maybe your opinion is incorrect. <laughs> like, we are, we are one species, right? This is something that we've established by this point, right? Yes, we are one species, but also by saying that these things don't matter, we completely disregard something that is beautiful about the human species, which is the variety of... Our, our that ability we have. to segregate ourselves. <laughs> there is no need to segregate ourselves. But also, look, look at the difference between... Um, a, Ancient Greece and the the native tribes of the Russian tundras and their different folklore and the way they treat different philosophies and the way they live their lives. There is a beauty to how these people adapted to their environment and the culture that they developed in order to do that. And I think that's very characteristic of the region where they're from. And it's also an indication that they're from that place. A lot of the times, that place is just their country. Yeah, but you're not talking about... But to me, you're still not talking about a country. You're talking about a culture, a people. And yes, a, a, a group of people can say, this is our land and we're not going to define ourselves as a country. But I, I think I think that we will always define ourselves by our culture, right? Like a culture will always be something that's, uh, that defines a person, right? They they And I think that a culture is the concept of... A culture is also something that's very wide because I think that in many ways we also try to, um, you know, growing up, we try to, uh, what's the word, try to like make ourselves fit into a culture, right? Like a culture is not something that's innate. Like we don't, you know, we aren't born and we're like, oh, we like spaghetti, I don't know, uh, or like just cook a lot of pasta like you don't you know you're not born in italy and you're not instantly like oh yeah culturally my thing my whole thing now is pasta because i was born here right so there's it's, i don't think that but also no i'm making a joke obviously but yeah fitting into it what i'm trying to say is that like i think that a culture is something that i think everybody like everybody in portugal everybody comprehends the portuguese culture in a different fashion right Yes. Everybody, no matter how much you try, everybody sees everything in a slightly different manner because we're different people. We're going to, you know, you might have one story, one, like I, I, we might, me and you might watch the exact same film and yet we're going to have completely different ideas of it. Oh because yeah. Depending, I that happening a lot with your film, Chris. you know, the, the, depending on our emotion on a day or depending on whatever we're thinking or, or, or depending on even our sitting position can slightly change our emotions towards the film. So I think that the, I, my issue with country is not the idea is not the issue with culture, because I think that there is, there's a lot of different human cultures and we will always, sorry, there's always people that are going to identify more with one culture than the other. I think that us looking at our culture and then saying, oh, we now must divide ourselves by, by our cultures and, and put fixed borders and then, and then have this entire like structure based upon uh, our culture and then have this whole shim shama, right? This whole but you're looking at it backwards. That's not what happened. 
that's not what happens. You don't develop a culture and then say, okay, let's segregate ourselves from the rest. Your culture develops as a result of your environment. And a lot of the times, the environment, it's this fixed max of, mass of land with a government that declares itself a nation, a country, a culture develops because of the place where it is developed. That's why nationality is part of a culture. The same way that, for example, for um, uh, native tribes of a certain, uh, of a certain, goddamn, I can speak, of a certain continent, don't have a, a nationality per se. They can still identify themselves with, for example, Native American culture or Native Russian culture or Native African culture. Because even though they don't have a fixed nation, their culture is still developed as a consequence of the environment that they were inserted in. Yes. It's not that we segregated ourselves and then formed our cultures. We formed our cultures because of the place that we were in. And then we looked outside and said, yo, fuck them. That's the problem. I think nations are inherently part of our species development and differentiation in terms of culture and ethnic background. I do not think that one should follow the nation, the notion of country blindly. But I also know that, or at least I think, that a nation, a country, is an important identifier and a, f a, a shared denominator, denomina that's the way you say it? I'm, um, not, pretty, I'm not sure. Uh, the shared... Um, uh, aspect identity, that I guess. People within this certain territory have. For example, you were saying that we do not have the same vision of Portugal. Yeah. And people from, okay, but we can have one common aspect, which is that we identify ourselves as Portuguese. We do, in fact, share a history and we share a language and we share, at least in some capacity, uh, a certain type of gastronomy and geographic location. It differentiates within the country itself. It also generates a lot of different cultures. But because we are Portuguese, because we have this history, because we had these things happen in the past and shape the generations that lived that past, which then shaped the gen generations that followed it, we differentiate ourselves from, for example, our our um, neighbors, the Spanish, even though we do share a lot of history. But can you agree with me that to have culture, right, to have that or OK, let me ask something else. That's, that's that question is not going to make any sense. Um, from here on out, right? We currently live in an extremely divided world, right? This is obvious. We agree with this. We live in a world where now, as we've discussed in previous uh, episodes, where, for example, in the, uh, the European Union, we are currently closing ourselves off for closing ourselves off from the entire rest of the world because of irrational reactionary fears of, of, of immigrants, right? Yes. And later, I think it was a couple of weeks ago where we were like the European Union stopped being a, a safe haven for uh, 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 refugees. For the first time ever since its creation, we no longer consider ourselves a place where refugees are welcome. And in many other places in the world, we, as time goes on, we collectively, in this idea of preserving our country and preserving our culture, we consistently try to ruin other countries. We murder ourselves over it for no apparent gain than protecting something which has no reason to be protected. I mean, yes, the people, there's a reason to protect the people, right? But... But this idea that, oh, we must protect this country, we must conserve this country, which again is why I'm trying, again, with the whole patriotic thing is, 
is that it's inherently kind of a backwards thing because like the whole like i hate you talked about this previously like the whole like the great replacement shit right yeah like there's this great fear in, in a lot of places which is like oh we're gonna get replaced but when you really when you look at at the way that science is and when you look at at the logical you know side effects of globalization you would see that yes naturally our our cultures are going to start you know interacting More. they're going to start merging our our you know in a thousand years we're probably gonna you know in terms of probably i don't know if this is true or not but i, I do think that at some point i've i've don't don't consider this a fact but uh i think that it's kind of makes sense that at some point we are going to collectively start looking more like each other because it, that's kind of how genetics works right if, if, if people you know from different places which you know naturally you had a certain uh, I, I would not quote you on that so i don't know like i do know that for example if like um that fuck i saw this once in a study which was that for example um for example uh i think it's uh people with blue eyes right they it's a yes. like it's like a rare mutation which technically doesn't exist like uh, blue-eyed people is not like a natural thing quote-unquote and that because yeah, of they have one common ancestor because of like because of just i'm gonna say crossbreeding it sounds like i'm talking about dogs or some shit uh what the fuck? no but i talk because of just you know people you know having relationships with each other uh naturally um those uh genes will die off or, or become stronger depending on the th stuff but they'll merge right that's the whole thing of like if to, if if we all start collectively hanging out and shit there is going to be technically less and less uh uh diversity right and i'm not uh, of course i'd say probably more culturally than anything else and i think we already see that a lot in the present i think that uh we uh, definitely started with colonialism which obviously was like forced uh dest destruction of of cultures um but as time goes on as uh, with the internet i think that you know ac across the 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 planet people are much more aware of different cultures and much more are more inclined to other cultures than they would have been you know before the internet right so what I'm trying to say is that in some ways, I think that we naturally are becoming one global society, right? And that I think that at some point uh, sooner or later, probably later, uh, much, much later, I think that we're going to start the, that naturally the, the concept of country or, or culture is going to start becoming muddy, right? Like the, 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 the clear line is going to start vanishing because we're going to become more and more uh, united unless we murder ourselves. Just finally, we finally just kill ourselves, just full extinction, just World War Three, baby, full nuclear war, and we all just fucking die. That's what I was trying to get at. Now, I, I, I have a question. Yeah. What was your question for me? I don't know. I kind of lost track of what I was going to ask you. But do, do you... But okay, I guess what I was trying to ask is that do you think that it is a natural or that it's an it's kind of an um what i was trying to ask you is that do you think that that or do you agree that naturally we are going to at some point going to have to give up on this like this just crazy uh fear that we're going to uh that our cultures are going to mix and at some point we are going to stop seeing like the clear lines of what our cultures lie no and yes Why? that's that's a shit answer uh, alpha <laughs> okay yes but so, actually no the second part first a lot of um, a lot of a cultures uh, signifiers can be found in a person's ethnicity and an ethnicity is also is a result of a bunch of factors. First of all, it's when you you already talked about this, a contained population breeds within themselves and they produce offspring that has a certain amount of characteristics that were inherited by their parents. Yeah. I'm talking of this as if I was uh, an expert on the topic. I am not. I did Neither have I. biology <laughs> on from fifth to 12th grade so if i do not know this uh, i should not have passed 
Now, a lot of variations can happen in this process, and that's yep. how a lot of differentiations occur. An example, as you talked with the, the blue-eyed people, uh, blue-eyed people have one common, one ancestor. common ancestor. Yeah. And what happened to them was uh, a slight mutation in their gene produced an eye that was colored blue. Yeah. That's how a lot of... Uh, That's how evolution works. A maybe. lot of <laughs> differentiations occur. And it's also why we had to adapt Darwinism to new, neon Darwinism, which is this idea that it's not only Darwinism, it's also mutagen, mutagen, God damn it, genetic mutations. Yeah. Now, as people produce offspring and marry each other, I think that the past that is their their culture will always be with them as a product of their ethnicity. And not only and not even mentioning their rituals and uh, and habits and ceremonies and beliefs for example, right now we see our own cultures developing. Yeah. You see at I'm gonna use the punching bag again, American culture, and it's a culture which is currently As, defined sorry. by guns, capitalism, private ownership, and then and a mixture a lot of, of a little right, bits of from every other culture in the world, I'd say. Yes. And a lot of religions practice, yeah. and a lot of right wing ideology. You also look at, for example, our own culture, Portuguese culture, yeah. and we see a post dictatorship culture. Yeah. And you see a post revolutionary culture. A lot of the older generation that either sided with the dictator, dictator the, the party or the revolutionary movement is extremely old or has died off. And as a result... I hope your grandparents don't hear this part. We, the younger generations, either make our own way or inherit those people's ideologies. Yeah. And because of that, and because of this inherent idea that we have of countries, yeah, I think that there are always going to be cultures. For example, I'm going to give a, a strange example, but please bear with me. You have watched Mad Max, right? Uh, years and years ago. Okay. Do they Are they a country? No. Okay. But you do know the different groups within the, the, the movie, correct? <sighs> Barely. I, th I think there might yeah, be different have groups. An idea. Yeah, I think that yes, but I believe there were different groups. I'm yeah, and you can see that even though this is a world without countries, their demeanor is so different. Yeah, you have, and they're in the way that they present the, that demeanor. You have an extremely religious, zealous group that believes in dying in high speed and doing things with chrome. <laughs> Two other that are completely related to gas production and bullet manufacturing. And one last group, which is comprised of women that ride motorbikes in a nomadic style. Even though these people do not have a country, the situation and the environment that they were thrusted in shape them into a series of beliefs and practices that were transmitted to those people around them, which helped them differentiate from the others around them, which in itself is a form of culture. Yes. And seeing as though humankind is an ever-evolving and changing species that is constantly put into different environments, especially as a group, I think we will never lose that part of wanting to differentiate, differentiate ourselves from others or having to differentiate ourselves from others because of life. No, I agree with you. I, I do agree with that part. And, and, and that's something I do talk about in, in, in the article yeah. is like our, um, I our, have a great our total, like our kind of just 
insatious like a thirst for wanting to be different to to always wanting yeah. to uh be the one the one the odd one out but also and at the same time always wanting to uh to belong which is kind of you know i would say is a bit contradictive i think you can never you know you can you can't fully be like this different person and at the same time belong 100 percent to a group i think it's maybe it's just me talking but i think it's kind of impossible um okay i got but, a great example that i just thought of which i think you might actually appreciate go ahead so imagine climate change pretty yeah. bad right pretty imagine bad. we don't fix it yeah sea levels rise We're some parts of the country gets a lot colder and other parts of the world get a lot hotter yeah Let's look at a... Uh, imagine that all communication technologies just goes fucking fried because fuck yep. it. A solar storm happened and yeah. all magnetic fields just massive, fucking... Yeah, cold. massive EMP. Well, yeah, all gone. World's fucked. Yep. Now, imagine that there is a certain, part, a certain part of the African continent which got submerged. Yeah. And created this huge piece of uh, sea that is not really deep, extremely clear, and has a lot of small islands. Okay. And those small islands have populations. Okay. Well, maybe those populations have to start relying on fishing yeah. and aquatic activities in order to survive. Yes. And as they develop their cultures, well, maybe some of those islands shift other religious beliefs that they have to worshipping some things. aspect of the sea. Fish. They start worshipping fish. <laughs> we see that a lot. While maybe some other islands do not appreciate that and just keep to their non-religious practices. Yeah. Maybe there is an island which lives near a resort of sharks and as a means to survive, they have to be able to develop a culture that centers around fighting shark sharks and folks. Shark. While shark others... Guns. Are really good. Have really, really, really good wood in their islands, so they make boats, which they use to travel between islands, and they can use that to sell things between islands. Okay. Do you see how this change in an environment can change these hypothetical cultures? Yes. That is a, a synthesis of human kind, basically. I know, and I, and I get what you mean, but my whole point of this article is not saying that, um, like, I understand, and I and this is obvious, countries are not going to disappear tomorrow, like, this is not a thing, and, and I don't think, and I'm not, and, I, and I'm not going on, and the whole point of this article is not me, me going on here and be like, we must end countries, countries must die, fuck you, uh, and, pay, and patriots. And patriots will should go with them. What I'm trying to say is that I think, and you might not agree on this, but that patriotism is the inherent like you know you are openly and actively like you want to be part of a country. Like you are you you are you know you are a, like everybody is part of a country, but you are specifically wanting to preserve the existence of your country, right? Or defend your country, or believe in your country. Whatever it is. You do your thing, right? You love your yeah. country. That that's a good that's a good thing. So that's what I was. That's why I say that patriotism is in in its essence is conservative because you are, you know, by loving your country, you want it to be conserved in a way. Yes, you might want it to progress, but that doesn't mean that you want the your your country to stop existing. And what I'm trying and what I think, and that's my opinion, I think that as humanity progresses, as we hopefully uh, we have two options either we go into total annihilation or we actually get our shit together and we are able to to develop into a a some sort of utopia which is many many years in in the in the future if it happens if it happens if we don't kill ourselves before that the big fucking if we have we have thought of the concept of utopia a lot of times already i think that naturally Whilst cultures are going to shift, cultures are going to change. I think that I think it's impossible to to, to be able to to predict this. But I think that a lot of in, a, in many ways, I because also because of the internet, we're are going to be able to catalog and be able to um, much better be able to keep track of old cultures. So I think that 
we are going to naturally develop a uh, sort of global culture that looks at the past and likes to to um, likes to cherish the old ways, right? Like, and and we already do that, anyways. Like, think about the way that the internet is now. We like to, you know, search up, you know, old habits and and recreate them because we think it, they're quirky and cool. And I think that as we progress, because and, they're familiar, we love having old habits. Yeah, and I as I think that as we progress and we become even more, you know, as as the internet becomes even more part of our lives, and and as generations, uh, you know, as generation after generation, as it is being part of this global. Uh, experience as the internet becomes the norm i think that slowly we're going to develop kind of a global sense of if uh, there's going to be like an inter there is, already is an internet culture right and i think that that is going to become kind of the normal culture and in many ways i think that the concept of country is going to die off because at some point we aren't going to need it anymore because if we are if we are able to somehow magically finally realize that racism is dumb and it doesn't make any sense if we finally are able to recognize that we need to you know help people from other countries and are you know and as we let our borders down as we start you know communicating with each other more as we start you know letting our guard down or whatever you want to call it as we start you know communicating more with each other as we start to learn more from each other the concept of country is going to become a vanity. It's going to become just a nice little emblem you get on your birth certificate. And it's going to have absolutely no weight or any value of any sort. Do you get what I mean? I hope that that might happen and help us achieve some way of progress within our species but i also have to be realistic and look at well look at our track records it's not thing. it's not a good it's not a great track record definitely not but uh, but can you agree with me which is the whole point of this oracle which is that inherently it, the whole concept of being patriotic and just be, having this insati insatious like love for, for a country is just kind of holding us back in a way yes wanting to always be like no i'm my country is great and i love it and and we need to, to save it and we need to save our culture that it's bullshit and they need to recognize that shit is so trivial it does not give a matter it does not it doesn't matter it doesn't matter we need to just recognize that we need to help each other that we're one fucking species and that's what matters that is literally the entire conclusion of my articles that i what i'm trying to say is the reason i think patriotism is kind of dumb is because i think there's other stuff in life that matters so much more and i think that only saying that that the people that live in one country that that is the only people that matter and even most patri patriotics always start flirting with nationalism and always start flirting with the little fascist bullshit so they always you know start falling into the idea of like let's not let the immigrants in let's let's not you know let's kick out the immigrants so even then even when you love your country so much you still don't even love all the people that live in it because you're a little bastard so the reason i i wrote this entire blog is is to try is to trying to just say is that being having this like just this and this weird love for your country or at least from my perspective this to, to me who i care about everybody i care about the the the, the global you know uh, success of humanity i could not give less of a fuck about the individual countries in the world i think that we have very cool cultures but i think that uh, that tying ourselves down to them and just saying that we must you know uh, protect them because if we don't protect them then oh it's bad like it's dumb and dumb i have no more words than dumb i don't know i don't know what to say <laughs> yeah fair enough I ramble over <laughs> but uh yeah like i don't know like that that, that was kind of my that's that's yeah i don't know uh, i i'm trying to what'd you say that was your thesis yeah that was my thesis on why i think that being patriotic is a bit of a waste of time honestly it's like why it's like what dude what the fuck like it's funny because let's be honest which is always like i mean it's not always but have you noticed how like most people that are patriotic always like make the worst possible choices for their country yeah because they want to 
it should stay the same. It it's like, change. boy, like, I, like I want my country to be great. Votes. I love my child. I never wanted to change. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's, it's exactly the same shit. It's like, oh, I love my kids so much. I love them so much. I like, but I swear to God, if they're gay, I'm gonna kill them. They have to die. It's like, whoa. You do not fit within these standards, standards that I have made up my mind based on my interaction. Yeah, it's. You it's, should get a 12 gauge to their chest. It's exactly like that. It's like, fucking hell. It's like, like, oh, I love my country. I love my country so much. Like, it is the best thing. I, I think we should protect it. And I believe in the total glory of it. Proceeds to vote for a fucking dictator. It's like, what are you doing? What the Immigrant fuck? comes in, pulls out the guillotine. It's like, bro, like, and it's also funny, like, the whole immigrant thing is so funny because, like, like, think about it, right? Like, think about it, like, from the opposite perspective. We are, like, all, we are all immigrants, by the no, way. No, no, no. Don't even look at that. I'm not even looking at that. Like, your country, right? There's immigrants going to it. That means that those immigrants who recognize that your country as a great country, one worth investing into. So you, by kicking out the immigra immigrants, like you're you're inv you're saying that they're you not that your country is not worth it. What the fuck? You are diversifying your species. Yeah. You yeah. are literally allowing your species to thrive because you are inserting within this within this capped off bottle of a genetic fucking milkshake why did i say milkshake i don't know man <laughs> like people like and my, my issue is that more people... things in which will might allow you to keep living on as a species and not become inbred in like 200 centuries isn't isn't it pathetic how like fascists can't even do fascism and and fucking what's the other word uh uh the genetic one what's the other the goofy oh, one eugenics. eugenics yeah i don't you find it pathetic how like fascists and like eugenic yeah. fans don't can't even, can, can't even do it correctly like damn, I would be like I would be such a good fascist. Like I would do it so well. I'd be so good at it. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, cause I know the, the tips and tricks, right? Like you need this. <laughs> cause like like fascists are are so dumb. They're like so bad at their job. Like they they're fascists. They want to be like these, like they want to be these crazy supremacists, but they don't even do it correctly. Like you need to recognize like. Like Hitler turns heads. What did you say? It's like it's like like think about like think about Hitler, right? Like he wanted the pure race, right? But like he did, he wasn't able to recognize that if he wants the pure race, if he wants his race to live in a utopia, there's gonna need he's gonna need slaves, right? But he wanted oh, to kill oh, all of them. Oh, you don't want to get in there. Uh, you do know that concentration camps were. <laughs> Camps, right? Yeah, but then, but but he started killing them. He was dumb. You can't you in a, in the pure capitalist way. I read the I've already finished reading the Communist Manifesto. Go check that out on the on the main channel. If you read the Communist Manifesto, you recognize that the bourgeoisie needs the proletariat. They need their little slaves. So you can't kill the slaves. You need to keep them alive. So you so fascists can't even do fascism right. They're just dumb. <laughs> like think about think about Italy right now, right? Like the, the crazy woman, the Mussolini 2.0 female version, right? She he wishes Mussolini wasn't a fucking weeb though. Like you, she can't recognize that if she wants her people to, to to you know if she wants her people if she wants the the purebred Italians right the the Italianos if they, if 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 she wants them. To live in a perfect society where they don't have to work, where they can just li live a life of leisure, right? Where they're just at the top, right? They're at the top. That they're going to need people but to... But she does to, to... because she's right-wing, and that's not how right-wing works. No, but... Work. but <laughs> you know... All right, everyone. I think we have fried Red's brain enough. I uh, know, man. I, I think I everyone think, for listening. I think the dictators aren't good at their jobs. I think I'd be a good dictator. Okay. What do you sound Italian? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like some. I don't know. I think I've awakened my my. Uh, you watched the Godfather recently or something? No, no, no. I think my uh, my ancestors have awakened in me. Your ancestors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Some this... Aurelius Caesar. Yes. Just my, looking uh... at the background, saying, "That's my bitch." Oh <laughs> uh, no, nah. I'm joking. I'm, I like no, but it's funny because like being right wing and like being a fascist and like generally being racist is so dumb that like you can't even be like, you, you, going to do a biology uh mass not master thesis but god damn i'm going to do a biology final project on why racism is dumb by yeah. using genetics you need to you need to look at like that one study that like shows that like people who like are racist like seemingly have like have a, a tendency to have lower iq like I love that so much. It's so funny. It's I like, love that so it's much. It's like, oh my god! Like, what you're telling me that like that racism is a side effect of being dumb? 
Oh my god, I'm so surprised. I am I am in awe. I could have <laughs> never guessed that. It's like Crazy I could have, I I never saw that coming. Oh my god, I am so surprised. Thank you so much for this amazing gift. Like That's it's it's, what you said. it's like it's like you know, it's like you it's like you know, you're you're trying to act surprised by a, a surprise birthday party, but you already know it was there. Like you already know what's gonna happen. You're like, oh my god, oh, oh my god, this is crazy. Being crazily discriminatory and, and reactionary is a side effect of being dumb. Oh my god, this is who could have seen this coming? Oh, I could have never guessed that this oh. was something. Oh my god, who would have thought that thinking that uh somebody just because somebody looks different that they're blessed is like uh showcases yeah. that you're dumb like oh my god well anyways i think that kind of wraps it up that was a weird that was a weird podcast episode i kind of liked it yeah i i, I kind of did because I, I feel like i've lost my mind maybe it's just because of the, the late hours but i oh, forgot it's not often crazy. that we need to agree on a on the podcast. So I mean, I think we, I think we, I think we do generally agree on the topic. Like, I think that you also, I mean, you agree that yeah, I mean, patriotism is kind of dumb. I think that we agree on like the whole concept. The thing is, I think that we're just explaining it differently. I think that's the issue. I think, I think that we, we disagree on the nuances on the small details. Yeah, but I think we, but at the end of the day, we both recognize that like. What, what we need is to put aside our differences that we want an utopian society. That's the, like our goals are the same. And I think that you yourself recognize that in a utopian society, countries are bullshit. Like what the fuck do we need them for? We don't need that yeah, shit. Like if we're one united well, society, like well, the fuck does it matter? We need a we need one of those cool global like- Yeah, uh, we're or, funny, top that they teach all the rules. No, 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 the, what the fuck? Well, now no, you're the one going into the crazy, the crazy dictator talk. What the fuck happened? I was he gonna- might get it. He might get the rules from th this little voice that speaks the to him. Is, nah, from the heavens. Now nah, I was gonna say we need one of those cool like earth flags you see on science fiction movies. That's what, that was what I was gonna say. Like those yeah. are like it's like a like a country flag, but like for the entire planet of the Earth. I always I always look at them like that's a cool design. I want to make what one else? of this. You're getting sleep. It's so late. And I not gotta, just I gotta wake up at six in the morning. And not just that. You know what? Also is cool when you Our when the list when our listeners support us over on Patreon or support it's us over Cayman, the creator of Segway. What? You don't know Dean Cayman. Oh yeah, no. I, feel I, know who, I know who Dean came in is. I just literally didn't understand what you said. Like, uh, like, like in terms of sound, not not what you said. Tell me, Dean Cayman, the creator of segways. segways. Yeah, nice. That's a good segue too. Uh, but yeah, make sure to support us over on Patreon. If you can't support us over on Patreon, check out our website to see how you can help us in other ways. It's in the collaborators tab or I th collaboration tab, something like that. If you're searching the website, it'll be on the top or it'll show you a little pop up once in a while. I, I, I have so I remind you. So do that. Um, join our Discord, chat with us. You know, get to know us. Uh, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna indulge in having this type of conversation like we just had in the in the podcast, but you know you being part of it through text or I don't through a VC. I don't know if I would ever want to do that because I'm I don't like talking to people. Uh, I'm shy and a little a little antisocial. Uh just a little bit. Um and uh yeah follow us over on on threads, Instagram. Don't don't follow us on Twitter. Pointless. Don't we gave up on Twitter. Oh. Or, uh, we just, gave up just, we gave up on twitter if you have if you haven't been following the news we gave up on twitter we can't be asked to be on twitter i can't be asked to be on twitter i'm the one who does all the I management like i'm 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 the one who does social media management and i was sick of just looking at elon's face and i was like nope i'm out so i gave up on it so yeah that being Cheer said up. goodbye everyone goodbye everyone let's uh say good night to alpha and uh we'll see you all in the next episode goodbye everybody <laughs>